We will be testing the auto annotate feature on a data set of varying images. Let's start with this preliminary x-ray scan. Normally you would draw a polygon by clicking through all of its vertices, but we don't really have the time for that now. On Darwin, you can select the cursor with the sparkles next to it, the auto annotate tool, and have the polygon automatically appear by running a very versatile class agnostic model. This model will usually define these points in less than a second, and it will work on almost everything. Take a look at this histological slide, for example, where the same model can define the various elements within it and perfectly segment them. If by any chance you have something that is more ambiguously shaped, like this element where this lipid layer around it is being captured, you can click on the areas you want to exclude. The model will run again after every click and try to exclude the areas marked in red. The same thing can be done to include areas. There are very few domains in which you might not want to use this automated segmentation method, such as very low resolution images or ones in which the objects are particularly thin and elongated, such as veins. With instead very high resolution images, it can work at any scale. The input size is defined by this initial box that you make. The size of which, in this very case, is very close to the maximum resolution of the image, meaning you can actually see the pixel edges produced by the polygon. And by this result, it is almost pixel perfect. Usually better than what some manual annotation results are. In cases in which the object is more ambiguous, such as in x-rays where objects appear transparent, the auto annotate tool will still be able to segment the object with minor corrections. In most cases, this ends up being a similar result to what you would achieve with manual annotation using polygons or using masks. Let's move on instead to a more delicious example in which we want to annotate this box of cookies. Nice. The next thing we might want to do is simply annotate an element of it, such as the strawberry. The same tool can be used to define parts of an object. Let's say we want to include the leaves. We can simply click three times to include them in. Now, I want to also add that zero bar that's just above the strawberry. So I can segment it with a box, and even though it's about 50 pixels in width, it will still be understood as an object. With a couple of corrections, it's perfect. Finally, I want to add the one below it. And there it is. I can hide the box behind it to show the results in greater detail. We have three segmentations that would have otherwise taken a few minutes to compose. And finally, let's say that I also want to add the logo of this company as an object to remember. There you go. And it's done. This tool was made to save you time. So using the same tool, you can move to any other part of the image and keep using it to continue your segmentation, whether it's defining the price tags or maybe just the barcode inside the price tag. You don't really have to change any settings or move away. Now let's shift to something completely different that auto annotate has definitely never seen before. This is an example of hail damage on top of the roof of a car. It still does a fairly good job at defining these dents, certainly better than I would. This would save the time in annotating this image by quite a lot. Some of the benchmarks can be seen below at the bottom of this article. So that's all I have for you today. I encourage you to try the tool yourself and see if it's really as good as I've demonstrated. It's certainly better than anything we've seen before and I'm very proud to bring this to Darwin. We hope it's going to save you time and it's going to make the creation of your machine learning models a lot more enjoyable. Until next time.